Good evening, this is CTV News. I'm Keisha Butts. A late morning explosion levels sections of an apartment building in Silver Spring. The explosion and fire occurred around 1030 at the Friendly Garden Apartments on Lintonsville Road. At least 10 people have been transported to local hospitals, some with serious injuries. Fire crews did assist at least several people from inside this building before the building came completely consumed by fire and the building further collapsed. At the same time, crews were addressing a wide range of injured parties on scene. The initial number at this time is that we have transported 10 people to local hospitals. It's kind of scary looking at the extent of the explosion and it's hard not to imagine that the impact that it's had on people. So uh, my sympathy goes out to all the families that have been affected and all the relatives of people that may have been here. This is definitely a tough day. Firefighters rescued several tenants during the incident. A similar fire and explosion occurred at the Flower Branch Apartments in 2016. That incident claimed seven lives. Health care workers rally for help. The union representing workers at Capital Region Medical Center says staffers are stretched beyond their limits. SEIU Local 1199 held a vigil at the hospital this afternoon. The labor group says Capital Region is so short staffed it's jeopardizing the safety of patients and employees. The union is calling for increased hospital funding to hire additional staff. Meantime, COVID positivity rates for the state and Prince George's County have fallen below 2%. Statewide, the positivity rate is 1.9%. In Prince George's, it's 1.6%. The state health department has confirmed 471 new cases. 14 Marylanders have died of the disease since yesterday. Meantime, in Montgomery County, officials and faith leaders are holding a candlelight vigil tonight at 7 o'clock to honor those lost to the coronavirus. It will be held at the Marion Friar Town Plaza in Wheaton. Prince George's police are looking for a missing man. This is 68 year old Victor Ruiz. Police say he was last seen wearing a hospital gown at Harry S. Truman Drive early this morning. Ruiz is about five feet, seven inches tall and weighs about 175 pounds. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to contact police. That number is 301 390 61 to excuse me 2160. Sworn into office nearly five months ago, U.S. Attorney Eric Barron is now the chief federal law enforcement officer in Maryland. He's the first African-American to hold the position. He says one of his top priorities is dealing with the increasing number of homicides and other violent crime in the state. Barron also wants to help identify at-risk youth and create more job opportunities for them. He is also contemplating federal initiatives that target school zones. Our office is, has been historically more in a, in, in a better position to do the more complex cases and going after organized crime, including gangs. We'll continue to do that, um, but we also, where appropriate, we take uh, firearms possession cases. Um, we're looking to prevent violent crimes before they happen, and so that's where uh, you know the enforcement of fire, firearms offenses can be very helpful. So. Um, you know, we're working with the ATF in particular and the Prince George's County Police Department on enhancing and, and taking more appropriate uh, firearms cases. Um, carjackings in the county has been up. We are, um, we are participants in two different carjacking task forces, um, working with our, across borders with our partners in D.C. and Virginia. CTV recently interviewed Barron about a number of issues. Over the next few weeks, we'll have a series of interviews about his top priorities. You're watching CTV News. I'm Keisha Butts. We'll be back in a moment. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help, we provided her help. She realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. 
My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in yourself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. Governor Larry Hogan held a vigil last night to show Maryland solidarity with Ukraine. It's been about one week since Russia invaded Ukraine. Joined by First Lady Yumi Hogan and Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, the governor spoke of the heroism of the Ukrainian people. In the face of such pure evil, the Ukrainian people have shown themselves to be true heroes, showing the world what it means to stand up and fight to defend freedom. Hogan recently announced that he was terminating a 30-year sister state relationship with a Russian province. Calling it an issue the state needs to tackle head on, members of the Maryland General Assembly unveiled a number of bills aimed at tightening the state's cybersecurity systems. You may recall Baltimore schools were hit in November of 2020 and the state's health department was targeted this past December. Among the measures, one would require the Maryland Department of Emergency Management to help local governments prepare for an attack. Another would create a fund to help smaller governments upgrade their security systems. Marylanders should feel confident that the personal information they give to the government is secure and protected. This package will help give our state agencies and local governments every tool in the toolbox to secure our IT networks and ensure our response to a cyber attack is swift, unified, and coordinated. Another measure would require all state and some local agencies to undergo annual secur security assessments. As we reported yesterday, a local teenager has been arrested for the fatal shooting of a Lyft driver. Abdul Khan was operating as a rideshare driver when he was gunned down over the weekend. Police say the juvenile, who has not been named, confessed to shooting Khan during a carjacking. Khan's wife spoke out about the incident yesterday. I just want to say I just want justice for my husband, for me, and my daughter, because I don't want anything that kind of happened to anybody else. He just put my life upside down. I don't know what to do because, because he was the pillar of our life. The 17-year-old suspect faces first-degree murder charges. Two other suspects were also charged for related crimes. State lawmakers are considering a proposal that would, re that would provide reparations to descendants of slaves. Delegate Juanica Fisher is sponsoring a bill that would create a commission to examine how to provide restitution. Fisher says reparations can come in a variety of ways, including free college tuition and favorable terms on business loans and mortgages. Fisher says she couldn't walk past the Annapolis statues of Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and did not do anything. It was always kind of considered a third rail politics, but it's really real. And I, the only way I can summarize in a short way for people out there is, you know, you can continue to want to address the symptoms of systematic racism um, with different bills and different programs. But the cancer is our, our immoral past of slavery in this country. And until you tackle that issue, you're going to constantly be putting band-aids on cancer. A hearing on the bill was held earlier this week. The University of Maryland will create a permanent outdoor space to honor the life and memory of a Bowie student who was murdered on the College Park campus. The plaza will be named after First Lieutenant Richard Collins III. As you may recall, Collins was murdered at a bus stop on the College Park campus back in 2017. The plaza will include a plaque honoring Collins, a fountain, and a mural created by both UMD and Bowie State students. Construction is set to be finished this May. And we'll be back with more news in a moment. Stay with us. Mom, I got it. What are you doing in there? I got stuck. Are you a dog? I wouldn't do that. Have you seen the pliers? Where'd you find those? It's not your birthday. Sorry. Uh, 
Thank you for staying with us. More than 2,100 communities in 16 Maryland counties participate in a mosquito control program. Throughout the summer and early fall, residents often contract for these services, sometimes for weekly springs. But a coalition of environmental activists, science, scientists, and public health experts say mosquito control products contain PFOS. The dangerous class of chemicals are linked to cancer and other illnesses. The coalition is supporting a bill that would require lab testing for these products and an annual registration. And so they're found in people's bodies, in our water, everywhere, and they are very seriously linked to long-term health effects, including cancer, um, developmental impairment and damage in infants, kidney disease, thyroid disease, birth defects, you name it. So what this bill, HB 570, that we're supporting does for, for Marylanders, for all of us, is that it requires the manufacturers to test by an, have, have their products tested by an EPA approved lab to ensure that the product that they want to be registered in our state for the use in mosquito control programs and by private co uh, companies are PFAS free. A hearing for HB 570 was held yesterday before a House committee. A second bill would expand prohibition of the sale, distribution, and manufacturing of PFAS to cover firefighting foam, carpet, and food packaging. Gubernatorial candidates will get a chance to voice their positions on environmental issues next week. Two forums on climate change will take place, one at the University of Maryland College Park on Tuesday evening, the other at Goucher College in Towson on Wednesday evening. Both forums will be live streamed and recorded, but the public is invited to attend the events in person. Maryland Matters is co-sponsoring co both events. If you live in Bowie, the city will be handing out free COVID test kits and masks for you this weekend. The giveaway will take place at the Bowie Senior Center on Saturday, March 5th. Bowie residents will get four at-home test kits boxes and 10 KN95 masks. You must show proof of residency. Again, the event will take place this Saturday, March 5th from 2 until 5 p.m. If you're a Prince George's resident between the ages of 14 and 22 and you're looking for summer work, listen up. The county is currently accepting applications for its summer youth enrichment program. From jobs to career training, there is much being offered this year, including energy conservation programs, industry-based training such as IT and auto mechanics. The county is also looking to hire thousands. The program runs from July 5th through August 12th. They need to see themselves in the future. And so with that, um, the Youth at Work Summer Youth Enrichment Program provides opportunities as well as pipeline towards uh, permanent and part-time employment. We have an ambitious goal this year that we want to employ at least 6,000 young people this summer, at least provide opportunities to all that apply. The deadline to apply is March 31st. To do so, go to the web address on your screen. Let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, mostly clear with a low around 24. Friday, sunny with a high near 46. Saturday, partly sunny with a high near 61. Sunday, mostly cloudy and warm with daytime temps in the mid-70s. And now for the community calendar. Join a virtual listening session with candidates for local offices. Those running for Prince George's Council Districts 1 through three will take questions from residents. They'll also share their plans for re-entry services for ex-offenders. The event takes place on Friday, March 4th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. You can register to attend the pre-entry, the re-entry candidate forum at progressivemaryland.org, then search for the forum under upcoming events. And that's your CTV News update. I'm Keisha Butts. Have a good night.